Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. What a week it was. The primaries are over. Does Bob Oprey have a chance? What does this mean? Are Republicans making advances? How could it be? You know him, you love him. The <laughs> hair that doesn't stop. Mike Litwin from the Colorado Independent. Glad, glad to have you here. Glad to be here, always. And from the editorial editor of the Gazette down in the Springs, Wayne Logason. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, let, let's start off with, with, with Mr. Beaupre. Here's the way the, the logic went. That if Tom Tancredo, who I think was the likely guy to win, if he won, it would scare away the guys who would fund Corey's campaign, Corey Gardner's campaign. True, false? No, it wouldn't have scared away uh, the people going to fund Corey. That money is coming. It's going to be set all kinds of Colorado records. Where the, the Republican Governors Association would not have played if Tan Crater were in there. And the, everyone was scared to death that the Democrats would say, would, they wouldn't even run against Corey. They would only run against Tan Crater and say, you're not going to vote for this guy, are you? And that Corey would, would lose a couple of percentage points. If you lose a couple, that's all you need to lose. Cause it's there would also be, a be this race. wonderful thing because. You know Tom. He has a tendency to Tom. say a few things, you know, bomb Mecca into glass, that kind of stuff. Hey, you and know, he's as running as for governor yeah. by uh, wanting to impeach Obama, which yeah. is a weird gubernatorial campaign. But, you know, when, when he says something, if he were the gubernatorial candidate, they would have grabbed that microphone and gone, so, Mr. Gardner, do you, do you agree? <laughs> exactly. Tell me about, about the primary. Well, you mean as far as Tancredo, yeah. Beaupre? I, I think it's a, a good thing for the Republicans, obviously, that Tancredo didn't prevail. It looked like he might. I mean, you had these three other guys who were sort of uh, together as moderates, uh, all drawing on that vote. And you had Tom with his very solid constituency, very loyal constituency. I was pretty surprised the way it turned out. I thought we were going to have a Tom Tancredo in the race. And then exactly what would have happened is, is what Mike said. It would have really motivated uh, the left and moderate Democrats to come out and vote against Republicans. All right, let, let, you, you guys have heard my political axiom. There's nothing Republicans can't screw up. And <laughs> I think Republicans broke that axiom with this primary. This is the first big primary that I've seen in a long time where the Republican team is stronger after the fight than before. After watching uh, what happened with Beaupre and Holtzman and then Tom Tancredo and Dan Mays and, and Joe, Joe, uh, uh, Jane Norton and, and Buck, I mean, we just have this way of doing it. For the first time in a long time, Republicans kept their powder dry and left that for a Hickenlooper instead of shooting each other. Yeah, so they, they, they cleared the deck. They got, they got exactly what they wanted. I mean, they got... <clears throat> You know, it's, it's sort of strange. I'm sort of surprised that over the years there have been these 10 wilderness years, right, for the Republicans in Colorado, 10 years since they won a top of the ballot uh, election in Colorado. And they've really developed no bench during that time. Corey is their entire bench. They got one guy, one guy, and he's, I think he's really good. I think he's a very impressive candidate, and he's the best person they could possibly have to run against Udall. But Where's the, where's the rest of their bench? They don't have it. And what was strange about this governor's race is that you had, I thought, a pretty weak field, and you had a guy, you had the cop who was at 19 or 20 percent, and the winner was at 30 percent, 31. That's a strange, that's a strange run for four, four guys, right, where they, where they didn't, they didn't move against each other in a campaign. There were no issues in the campaign. It was sort of a strange thing, but I think what Republicans can say is that 73 percent of them didn't vote for Tom Tancredo, and I think that was that was that was the best thing that happened to him that night. Yeah, it may be that that Republicans have decided that it's good to win once in a while, <laughs> because they, that don't, certainly is not getting crazy. Don't get crazy. They got what they wanted. This is what they wanted. It's interesting to see what'll happen next. All right, let's talk. Let's talk about what what, what yeah. happens next. You know, uh, Bo Prey and uh, I've been friends with all four of these guys, and these are good guys. You know, does Beaupre have the mojo uh, to, to get the job done? I think he does. I think, he, you know, he, he, it was a long shot for him to get in. Things didn't look good for him when he was first testing the waters. He got in. He prevailed in the primary. And I, I think he learned so much from his last run. He's not going to make those same kinds of mistakes. It's a different time. And I think Hickenlooper, 
surprisingly, I wouldn't have said this a year ago, but I, I think he's vulnerable at this point. Really? So See, he, no, I thought a year ago, after the most destructive left-leaning legislative session that's ever. That's when he became vulnerable. He was, he right. was, he, I thought he was more vulnerable than, than Udall. Now I'm wondering if Udall's more vulnerable. And I never would have thought Udall was vulnerable. Ever. But right. look at the, can you believe Udall is now challenging Cory Gardner to debates? He's calling yeah. him out. He's, he's trying to bring him into the ring. How often do you see an established incumbent doing that? to someone who's challenging for this. I, I, I can't remember yeah, the last time yeah, I saw well, that. You know, let me talk about Bo Prey for us for a minute. I mean, Bob Opre was the savior for the Republican establishment this time, right? And yep. holding off Tancredo, and he was, the, he was the best guy to do that. And, you know, he brought his own money into the campaign. He loaned the campaign half a million dollars, which was a lot of money in that race. He, uh, he had name recognition he'd been there before he's got a he was he was very solid with the leading republicans who all trusted him and um so he was he was the best scenario to to hold off tancredo but still you know bob lost by 17 points to bill ritter who is you know not exactly a great politician and you know, I, I like Bill Ritter a lot, but you can't you can't say he was a great politician, right? But remember that. So, but uh, the, uh, the yeah. question is, so people say that he has learned. Uh, I, I'm not sure what well, the exactly scene, the scenery you learned, has changed. Right? The scenery well, has changed too. Th that was a that was a ref when he lost by that much to Ritter. We had referendum C on the same ballot, and he was opposed to it, so he really lost the support of the business community which he typically the republican typically typically would have had that's not in the mix this time and there's a lot of other stuff that is in the mix lose. that i think benefits you could not lose to bill witter by 17 points it was impossible well, it was <laughs> impossible I mean, am i right yeah. is, was it impossible could you ever ever predicted yeah. that but, but it wasn't it wasn't and he entered the race as the favorite but also you're missing the other uh, the, the other parts he went through a, a terrible primary where, of course, Republicans do the Democrats' bidding in these, in these primaries, and, and that fight with Holtzman came up with <laughs> monikers like Both Ways Bob and all the rest right, did half right, that work. Right. And Democrats doing what Democrats always do, there's no primary. No I mean, think primary. about that. Bill Ritter, a <laughs> pro-life, <laughs> pro pro-life, exactly, has no primary has challenger. No primary. This is why Democrats can, can win. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right, so does, does Bo Prey have a shot this time? Uh, it's, it's really, I, really, really I really don't think so. I, I don't think he has a shot. I think, I think, you know, I think that Hickenlooper is a really good politician, despite his, despite his lovely week he his had. Foot in the mouth uh, performance with the sheriffs, and <laughs> which you know, you know who Hickenlooper is. You know Hickenlooper. He's this guy who wants everyone to love him, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes to the sheriffs, talk about guns, guns, it disappears an issue basically, right? Even even Republicans during the primary. They, Nathan Dunlap was was a much better issue for them. They get, got much better response than guns. Guns was it happened last year. It was last year's issue, and that now he brings it back as an issue because he wants the the sheriffs, who are never right. going to like him, him, to like him. Not but, but, wise. Not but, wise. But <clears throat> let's, let's let's go on that one for a second because yeah. this one this one is is beautiful. Bill Clinton had the way of being a, a chameleon. I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that yeah. in an impressive way. That whatever crowd he he went through, he could somehow fit and and be loved. Right. Hick is a lovable guy, but yes. come on, at some point, you know, it's either forgetfulness or it's lying. I didn't <laughs> call one of the richest men on the planet. Now. I would remember if I had several conversations with one of the richest men on the planet. Right, but everybody knew he called him, and the he had said right. he called him. There were records that said he called him. So what does Hick no, Hickenlooper's brain was? I had to sign it because a staffer promised that I should sign it. Come on. Th this right. image, and Beaupre is going to jump all over this, of, of an ineffective leader. I can't decide on Nathan Dunlap. I had right. a staffer decide on this most divisive issue, which I didn't know was divisive. How do you not know it's divisive? Right, yeah. No, I think any more, you know, public meltdowns like we saw last week uh, at the sheriff, was it two weeks ago at the yeah. sheriff's convention, uh, and he just becomes more vulnerable, and it, it sort of depends what happens to the economy between now and then, obviously. But what, what was the and, message out of the, the whole sheriff's debacle? I mean, every time Hick weakness. touches the issue, the issue around guns, 
his hand gets burned. I mean, every single time. Right. Even when he right. tries to be nice, oh, I'm sorry I didn't talk to you when you wanted to, it flies back because he lied. I mean, right. it, he lied. Well, guns, the Democratic handling of guns is a gift to the Republicans in the first place. Hicks should have known that and stayed away from it as best he could, and he never did. And then, like you, like you say, that, that thing in front of the sheriff's convention just made him, it was a lot like the Nathan Dunlap thing. It calls into question his leadership. As we wrote in the Gazette, lots of people can disagree with you on your gun control uh, platform, and a lot of people uh, can hate you for it, and, but a lot of people will agree with it. The fact of the matter is if you can't stand behind it, no one's going to respect your position. What, love or hate your position on that, if you can back it up, if you can own it, then at least you have the respect, even of people who don't agree with you. And he didn't do that. But, you know, but guns, guns is not going to win a statewide race in Colorado. It's, it's just not. It well, energizes well, pe all the people who are going to vote against Hick well, and Looper anyway. No, hang on. Stop, Lipper, stop there for yeah, a second. Yeah. The, there was a citizen's initiative to get uh, the concealed carry ban on college campuses again. Right. They said they had enough signatures, and they pulled it. Right. They won't do it. You know, right. why? Because... Democrats don't want anything that is gun related on Absolutely. that ballot because Absolutely. because they'll get their asses But handed Republicans to them again. don't yeah. put gun don't put pro gun stuff on the ballot either because they know it will lose. I mean, there's never been when, has there ever been a pro gun thing on a statewide ballot? I can't I remember know. it. Be, why? Because it loses. The uh well, in fact, there was one that was that was started just recently and it didn't get, gain any momentum, right. it couldn't get any funding. So you're yeah. right about that. I but. mean it's so you know, Hickenlooper is not gonna lose on guns. And the no, other but thing, he motivates and, the base. No, I, it. I agree. So, I have yeah. I, I, I'm not I'm not right. arguing against how much he fouled up. He fouled up big time. How's a guy how does a guy in two thousand fourteen not know that what he says at that meeting is going to be recorded? It's two thousand fourteen, <laughs> everything is recorded, everyone's got one of those phones, <laughs> everything is recorded. How does he not know that? So, so yeah, he fouled up. It went up. viral but during the meeting. It was, well, he right. was talking right. Right. exactly. <laughs> but also but also hick is hick. He's been around a yeah. good while now. People know him. It's not like anyone is surprised when he screws up like this. Well, there's one thing about screwing up. There's, a, there's another thing about lying about it. You know, saying, I didn't make the call. I, I didn't know you guys were trying to reach me. I was there with the sheriffs. They were hanging exactly. out in his office, no. banging on the door. I, know. I didn't know it was divisive. Are you kidding me? Crazy. You know, these, these, you know it, it's... It's not just that kind of all shucks thing, which I think people are worn thin of. This, this is, no, you lied to me. All right, it's a small lie, but you lied to me. I agree, but I'm saying people know Hick. I think he's got a Teflon effect. He's, he's likable. The economy in Colorado is pretty good. People talk all the time about how, you know, it, Colorado isn't doing as well as it should be doing, but if you look in every national magazine that ranks Friendly to business, good for business. They're in the top ten in every. Sure. We're in the top ten in every, every, almost every single one of those. I don't see how that guy loses to a guy who's already lost by 17 points in a gubernatorial campaign. I don't know. I'd I just think, be I, shocked. I don't think it's <laughs> out of the question that Bo Perret can pull this off if he can come across as likable, which he is likable. I mean, but it, it, it is true, Hickenlooper has this high likability factor. He overuses it, which he did at the sheriff's right. and, 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 and other, on other occasions. It works for him most of the time, and then when he overplays it, it backfires on him. Uh, so I, I think the Republicans have, it's a long shot. It's going to be a very steep uphill climb, but it's not out of the question. 50 years since a... Uh, since a, an incumbent governor lost in Colorado. You see, but 50, yeah. <laughs> 50 years since an incumbent governor lost in Colorado, but that's the same reason uh, on, in baseball. I keep betting on, on the Washington Generals over the Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> because they're due. They are due. They're due. All right, so <laughs> bring, it, bring it to Udall for a second. While yeah. this news, uh, this primary, helps Cory Gardner tremendously, this could be this could be the pickup. How in the world does Udall, a household name, one of these power names, you no know, Udalls don't lose. Right, political he's, dynasty. He's nervous. He's very nervous, obviously, and I've heard numbers that should make him nervous. And I think that you know I do think there's a real sort of anti-incumbent uh, 
attitude out we there right now. Every, every year, every we hear year, that a lot, right? but, but it, it's not true. It's never true. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's true. I hate your incumbent. Sometimes it's true. I hate your incumbent. My <laughs> incumbent's okay. Your incumbent sucks. It's like yeah. children and flatulence. <laughs> So this is the one. It's a lot like that. Yeah. 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 This is the one Republicans need to win, right? I mean, oh, first yeah. of all, could the, the the whole the Senate could be determined by right. what happens in this race. Right. This right. could be the race that gives the Republicans the majority in the United States Senate. So it's huge. I mean, it's it's hugely important. Plus, you've got Cory Gardner, who is. I like to say the you know the conservative with the human face. That's the person. <laughs> that's the conservative who wins in Colorado. And Bill Owens yeah. had that, and um, Cory Gardner definitely has it. And that's the kind of conservative that, that who wins in Colorado. They've got the best possible candidate. Now you know you know wh why did you all ask Cory Gardner to debate? Mm -hmm. And and I'll tell you why. Corey is, you know, he's he's doing he's doing some hiding. He's not sitting down and, and answering answering some tough questions. I mean, he here's here's what Republican this is what Democrats are throwing at Cory Gardner to throw in the personhood thing at him, right? So Corey stick. comes out. Well, Corey comes out and says, "I don't, you know, I I reject Colorado personhood," but at the same time, he is co-sponsor of a House personhood bill. So the question is. How can you be both? You, how do you, how do Look, you dismiss one politics, when you're sponsoring the other? Politicians do that yeah. all the time. When they're, in a, when they're in a House district, it's a different dynamic than when they're statewide. When they're statewide, it's different than when they're national. Bill and Hillary Clinton used to be pro-life in Arkansas. They were anti-abortion pro-lifers all the way until they hit the national stage. That didn't work for them anymore, so they not only sort of walked away from that, they went completely to the other side. No, so I, I agree it, people it, it, change it, on these right, things all right, the time. What right, I'm saying but, is he's doing it simultaneously. Well, it is difficult, but I really, <laughs> I, I honestly think if he wanted to go out and, and, and put commercials on TV that said, this election isn't about abortion, or my opponents want to make this election about abortion, because I really don't think anyone's voting on that, and I don't think anyone's afraid that Cory Gardner getting into the Senate is going to yeah. take your birth control pills. It just doesn't fly. It didn't work in the recalls, and it's not going to work here. You know, I, I think there's a bigger issue, which is I mean, we're fighting for the 20%, 15% in the middle. That's yeah, all right. it's about. Right. And guys like yeah. us, junkies, we <laughs> think, you know, he voted for this. He feels this way. The personhood, you know, a lot of it is just this intangible likability. Oh, right. what, what, what really blew my I mind agree. was that the four guys running for, for governor on the Republican ticket had a 20-point deficit with female voters. You know, why not the Republicans? Mm -hmm. Cory Gardner didn't have that. I think it was just a few point deficit. And it's like, wait a second, you know, they're all Republicans. So it's not the R, it's it's that it's that face or something about yeah. it. And But what I think is happening, I think you've got I mean, I think what's happening is you're seeing very much a generic race to, to this right. point. I mean, you've got two guys who are I mean, Cory Gardner's name recognition is not that high. You know, I mean, it's not that high yet. He still is, he's still introducing himself to a lot of Colorado. And uh, Udall is, is, a known, is a known thing. He's stuck with Obamacare. You know, he's stuck he's with... Stuck being he's stuck being the 50th the, vote for Obamacare. Yeah, he's yeah. stuck with a few other things, right? So, mm -hmm. so um, but Corey still has to, is still defining himself for a lot of Colorado. And the fight is, and you talk about personhood, that's why it's important, is the, is the fight over defining who Corey is. And, you know, it's, it's a cliche, but it's, a, it's one of those true cliches. You know, middle-class women in Jefferson County decide elections yeah, right. in Colorado. Right. Right. They really do. So if middle-class women in, Col in Jefferson County are worried about Corey on abortion and, and birth control, he can lose. Before, that's right. how before we run out of time, let's, yeah. let's, yeah. let's go to, yeah. to the, other, the other big one that's going to yeah. dominate everything. Yeah. Um, this week, Loveland said no to a fracking ban. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was great news. Yeah. But 
the talk of a special session to head off whatever jo Jared Polis is going to put on the ballot, I'm not even certain that Jared Polis has even started gathering signatures. Yeah. And as a guy who knows that business pretty well, uh -huh. if you haven't started already, the chances of it getting on, you're going to have to put a lot of money exactly. to get those signatures done in time. Right. You know, this could have been a bluff to get this this um, uh, to get to the special session and get get this thing done. Yeah. Right. Industry wants this. You know, amazing. They want the compromise, the the thought of actually having to, to have their industry, life or death, on their industry in one political arena. They can't handle that. They can do the political calculus, um, or the the business calculus on we can do this, we can't do that. Right. But political, it's it's a spin of the wheel. Do They're we afraid of what the voters right. might do. Go ahead. What but I, I, I think the voters will reject this. Yeah. And I hope there is not a special session. Because losing by half and calling it victory is, is, is not victory. Uh, I think this is a winnable thing, but they want it. Uh, the governor okay. wants it because the governor knows that if, if, if this thing gets on the ballot, he's going to have to come out again. I'm it. not even sure they can. It, how can they get some of this stuff off the ballot if they have a special session anyway? I, I mean, they, that would take a lot of cooperation by a lot of different people. It only takes Jared sure Polis because he's the money, he's the money <clears throat> well, behind it. That's true. He can, he can defund it. The whole Jared Polis thing, by the way, is kind of funny. Though He goes off to his vacation home in Weld County. I mean, the man's worth, the vacation capital of Colorado. The man sold companies <laughs> for hundreds of millions of dollars. He sold one company for almost a billion dollars. Uh, this is a, a, a multi-millionaire, billionaire perhaps, a Boulder resident who goes off to his uh, vacation home in Weld County. There's some working class guys across the street trying to make a living on an oil rig. It annoys him. So that sets off this whole thing <laughs> right. about Jared Polis is going to stop this. I mean, talk about talk about uh, the elites going after the working class, and if the oil and gas industry will tell the story like that, none of this has a shot. But 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 their industry industry always runs scared. They are risk averse. This is a big risk. Here's the other side. Jared Polis says, you know, I'm only if I'll accept this compromise only if it's the way it is. So you have one rich guy right. in Congress dictating to a hundred legislators and a governor what the terms of surrender are going to be. They're risk averse because of the, uh, vol the amount of money that has been invested. Now we all talk about the big, bad, scary, ugly, mean oil industry and nobody cares if they're hurt and if they put you know millions and millions of dollars into a hole in the ground and they lose it all, nobody feels too sympathetic about that. But a lot of these are, uh, so I, you could, first of all you can see where they're running scared because they have a lot yeah. on the line. But a lot of people who are going to lose out are just uh, people who invested in property for retirement or they expect an income from an oil lease or they own the mineral rights under the ground and they're just ordinary common Coloradans who that's where they put their money. They're running yeah. scared as well. But two things, or two things. One is that this is a pro-environment state. You know, it's, yeah. that's, that's the default position. And that's why the oil companies are, are scared. And two, I think, the, I think the oil companies overstepped and they overreached, which is why you've seen this, you know, this, uh, the, the people backing away from them in, in, some of these, in some of these towns that they came too close to residential neighbors. They, didn't, they shouldn't have. I, think, I don't think they had to do that. It's, there's a lot, just a lot of oil out there, you keep telling us. So I think they, 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 they initiated something that caused people to, to, to back away from them. I, think they, I don't think they but, had but to. The, but the nuttiness of the environmental argument here, which was first, you know, water, your water is going to burst on fire. And we find right. out that has right. nothing to do with yeah. fracking. Right. Uh, then they say, well, that's not it. It's poisoning the well water. And then we find out, well, wait a second, that's not the case. It's all cement. The, the, the drilling's right. all in cement. That can't be Mild it. Deep. Well, then it's, then it's the hydraulic fluid that comes out. We say, well, wait a second, that goes into a special pool and gets recycled. That's not it. Now it's, it's methane. Oh, my God, it creates methane. And when we find out that the cows here in Colorado make a whole lot more methane than, than <laughs> any oil will put together, then where does that go? Property and value. so as well, people understand this, this whole emotional issue just look, craters. Yeah, but it's John. science, right? I mean, it's science is, we know that people 
only believe the science that supports their feelings, right? So people, you know, people reject right. science when it it says something that they don't. But, that yeah, they yeah, don't this, want this is, to agree by, by the way, this is this is where environmentalists and the guys who want to teach creationism in, in grade school they're they're right here like this. <laughs> I want to believe this. That's exactly. the way it is. And the anti-vaxxers. It shouldn't be about feelings. It's about property rights. It's clear and concise in law. The, a lot of these people, a lot of these neighborhoods, and people bought their houses in these neighborhoods, encroached on minerals, on, on, on mineral-rich ground that somebody owns and has a right to go in here and, and extract their minerals. They built their house here. And right. there's going to be an oil well yeah, there. You, you shouldn't want do an oil well in your build. backyard. I, I do, actually. I, I, I yeah, want give an oil well in my backyard. Not your money. No, even well, if, it, even if it's not. Lease <laughs> for, to, to, to use See, my even that, you know what's so funny? And the, and the, the education that's going to happen out of Jared Polis' house is, yeah, he came home the, the week where they do the drilling, the four or five days. And it is hellacious. It's a lot of noise. It's a lot yeah. of trucks, a lot right. of that. And afterwards, you know, you go up there now, what are you going to find? You're going to find a pipe coming out of the ground and a big cylinder and it's all going to be around a fence. There's no, right, it's at most. silent. Sometimes a tough yeah. shed covers the whole thing. Right. And, and Jared so, could just simply buy the property across the street if he wants to control it. That's how, you know, that's how we've achieved other things in his hometown, for instance. The city bought up, uh, you know, who are thousands and thousands of acres of open, open space. space. They didn't take it, they bought it. You want to control land, buy it. There's a, there's a reasonable compromise we made here and, you know, it's, it's I think that, that most people want the compromise and yeah. the, it's just... Most the, people don't understand it. The people who want the compromise are people of, about, scared about Jared Polis destroying their businesses and people who don't understand the science. You understand the science, you go, bring it on. Yeah, yeah but I, I, it's funny to hear people talk about the science who keep saying global warming is a hoax. <laughs> can we, can Nobody, we, nobody says you, global warming is a hoax. People say man-made influence on global use, warming. Can you use science only when it's on your side? What's amazing is that the enviros, <laughs> what's amazing are the enviros who support uh, gas drilling because this is the bridge fuel. This gets us off of uh, carbon. All right. right. Last, yeah. Only a few seconds. Yeah. Is there a special session? Is there not? I think there's not. I'm thinking it's about 50-50. All right. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute, independenceinstitute.org. We'll see you next week.